Thanks to GameSir for sending me the G7 HE to review. This is another Xbox controller, also with Hall Effect and therefore anti-drift sticks. This one seems really close to the model most people would probably have their hands on, the one that's most popular and well liked. After playing with it for a while, I can see why. Overall, I like this one a bit better than the Collide. Speaking of the Collide opening, this controller isn't too different. It comes in the same kind of box, only so many different ways you're gonna package a controller, especially from the same company. The bubble wrap is taped to itself at the edges, so not too hard to unwrap, just like last time, unroll and remove. Once it's off, you can pop it or use it to protect some other package at your discretion. It's got the same GameSir branding you saw last time, as well as coming with its own USB-C cable. Nothing too crazy here. Like the Collide, it comes with some Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which I may take advantage of this time since I've wanted to try out Wolong, Sea of Stars, and Atlas Fallen at some point. This may just be personal taste, but the triggers and bumpers feel a little better to use than on the Collide, and the textured grips feel better to hold onto. The reason I say all this probably has to do with the shape of the controller in my hands. I went back and forth between them, and when I use the G7HE, I find my hands resting more intuitively and comfortably on it than the Collide, though if your hands are bigger or smaller than mine you may experience that differently. As it is now, the difference in how it feels to hold makes the entire experience of using it feel just better. You know, avoiding unintended button presses also feels better. Same clicky buttons, presumably the same kind of micro switches as the Collide. And one thing to note is I received it in white this time as you can see, so like you might predict, this color gets noticeably dustier and dirtier than a darker one would, so make your choice accordingly if you're gonna get this. The G7HE led me to an interesting situation that didn't happen with the Collide, but which I think is worth explaining. In case it happens to you, you can probably fix it the same way I did. At first, trying to connect this controller wasn't working. Pressing the Xbox button to turn it on once connected would only power it briefly and it'd then turn off again, with Windows playing the associated USB connection sounds. Because of that, I suspected my USB drives were recognizing it, so after some looking around, I tried disabling my USB drive's power saving setting in Device Manager. Upon doing that, the controller connected just fine, and I didn't have to do anything extra to start playing games with it. So, if you're ever connecting a controller to your PC and it's feeling like it's not registering, check to see that your drive's power saving settings aren't, you know, interfering with it. The back paddles, definitely my favorite feature of these kind of controllers. Like I said earlier, these are easier to avoid pressing accidentally than the ones on the Collide so far, so I rate them higher personally because that's kind of a big deal for me. It was one of the only real criticisms I had of that one. My general thoughts on back paddles, in case you missed them last time, is they become comfier to play with the more I experiment with them. And the best way to benefit from them is to identify moments while you're playing a game when a button press feels annoying. If it's losing you comfort or losing you time, when some finger needs to leave a button to press another, you've likely discovered a good button to assign to back paddles for that game. In games with a sprint toggle that's on a left stick click, I often bind that to the left paddle since I quite dislike clicking my left stick to sprint in games, I've always disliked it. In rooftops and alleys, clicking the left stick starts using your built-up line energy for a speed boost, so that's what I use left paddle for there. In Prince of Persia 2008, I made Elika's compass be the right paddle by assigning Y to it, so I could keep control of my camera while calling on her to show us our path. A right stick click for easy locking on, like in Souls Likes or Raynatus, that goes on my right paddle. In Evo Tinction, which I played recently, you have a flashlight you can turn on or off manually, and since that's normally on the D-pad, I hotkeyed the left paddle to that, so I could get clicky with my flashlight without having to stop moving. Another really great way to use them is in some action games or RPGs that let you quick slot items to your D-pad for instant use in combat. Taking your hands off the left stick doesn't need to happen so much when your potions are easily usable from a paddle. What I've done here with After Image is exactly that. I made my two more commonly used potions, health and mana, be accessed through back paddles by binding d-pad buttons to them. This is nice, I can heal or prepare for more magic without having to stop moving. If you prefer something darker than After Image, in Moonscars, my dodge went on a paddle and my map went on the other. Dashing and air dashing is something I do frequently in this game, and checking my map is something I do often in Metroidvanias in general. Later I'd even go back to After Image to set up the same configuration, one of my paddles being map, the other being heal. One thing I didn't discuss in the last video was the GameSir Nexus software. Part of that was because I wanted to showcase how usable it was even without it, because not everyone is going to want to install extra apps, and part of these controller selling points is that you can use their special features just by plugging them in. 
This time though I did explore it to check it out and it has some pretty nice options. It lets you create up to three profiles and swap between them. You can alter things like the report rate and hertz, stick dead zones and response immediacy, whether to enable the hair trigger function on the two triggers and even disabling all the vibration on the controller from the software or unit itself without having to go through any in-game menus each time in case you prefer it off. I know hair triggers are popular for shooters. Really, any game in which you would want your trigger to actuate or respond more immediately than the way the default input response is handled is probably a good one to try it with. If trigger inputs feel weird after activating hair triggers, recalibrating the controller while under those conditions usually seems to fix the odd feeling. I came away from my time with the G7HE so far realizing I like this controller even better than the Collide. The textured grip seemed to help a bit with not accidentally pressing the back paddles because the shape of the controller just feels better to me. And those paddles themselves seem to have a tad more resistance than those on the Collide, so the general comfort of extended play is comfier. I started and finished all of Evo Tinction on this controller. I've been playing all my recent Prince of Persia 08 and Lost Crown gameplay and recording the footage with it, and both After Image and Moon Scars are 2D Metroidvanias I've been trying with it as well. All around, it's been enjoyable to play with. I feel good enough with it that I'm continuing to play with it even after I don't need to, which is probably a good sign. Normally I would have sought back to my DualSense by this point, because nothing beats that for me, I'm just way too used to the PlayStation layout, but jumping from game to game is really easy with back paddles that let me shortcut whatever buttons I want, a feature that has really grown on me. I hope I don't get too used to it. If you made it to the end, let me know what games you are playing nowadays. On top of the other shown, I've been loving Honkai Star Rail and a little bit of Zenless Zone Zero. Molza is one of the more stylish and fun rogues I've played recently, and I really like his fantasy and the way he synergizes so well with his general. Anyway, thank you for listening. May fog shroud you, may stars light your way, and may the night be kind.